Uh, welcome. I'm Scott, and I'm going to demo a couple of uh, Geiger counter projects that I built. So, interesting thing about a Geiger counter, it detects uh, nuclear radiation. So I have a radioactive source here that we'll try in a moment. So the two kits that I've built here, the first one on, over here on the left came from uh, eBay. It's a very popular kit. It, uh, it is available with or without the uh, display. The display board itself is mostly uh, pre-soldered. You just have to solder header. The bottom board you build entirely yourself. It's got an Arduino microcontroller. There is a, a little beeper. There's an LED that blinks. It took me maybe an hour or two to build it. It was uh, it was pretty simple, all uh, through hole components. And uh, back here we have a Russian uh, SBM20 Geiger tube. I bought that separately. That came, I believe, from the uh, the Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, Geiger tubes that you can uh, you can buy. I recommend these SBM20s. There's a lot of different uh, Geiger tubes that you can buy. I recommend the SBM20 here because it's relatively cheap. I think you can get them for about 20 bucks a piece. So there are other tubes that are more sensitive, like this uh, LND712 uh, tube that I got from. Uh, Spark fun here in the States, but it cost a lot more money and was a lot more fragile. So the SBM20 is a good starter tube to uh, play with. It's relatively durable. You're less likely to uh, to damage it by uh, by being uh, clumsy with it. So let's try uh, let's try out our radioactive sample. This is a sample of uh, cobalt 60. It came from a company called United Nuclear, which will sell you uh, little nuclear samples in the uh, and uh, ship them to you. It is uh, supposedly safe. Let's hope so. And the sample is actually way in the middle there. I see like a little dark thing in there. It's encased in this uh, plastic or ceramic or something. So let's bring it over here by the tube. See as we get closer to the tube, the count per minute goes up. getting a few hundred now, 700, so we get very close, up to about 3,000, 3,500, should be able to get a peak around uh, 7,000 or so. So the SBM20, it looks like a large tube back there, but it's really a, a pretty small glass tube inside of the metal uh, casing. So you, it's very sensitive to having your sample on the, uh, on the axis of the, uh, the tube. There, we got a good 8,000. Let me turn off the camera light just so we can uh, maybe have a little bit better chance of seeing the LCD display. There you can see the count increasing again. So that is the, uh, the eBay kit. Relatively cheap and you buy your uh, tube separately. It runs off uh, 9 volts. You can power it with a battery. It's a good, uh, fun, easy, simple kit to uh, build. So over here on the right is a Geiger counter that I designed myself. So I'm rather fond of these uh, old school Nixie tubes. So I have four IN12 Nixie tubes. I have a Decatron. The Decatron is not actually performing any function other than to operate as a display device. So a Decatron is typically a counting tube. It counts uh, from one to ten. And in this case, we're just uh, taking it over every time a nuclear particle is detected by the uh, by the Geiger tube. This is another uh, SBM20. Uh, I've got it sealed up in heat shrink tubing um, and hooked up to a nice little shielded uh, cable so I can take it and move it around separately from the uh, Geiger unit itself. Um, so this is, is done in two parts. So this board over here is one of my IN12 Nixie tube clock boards. So I designed that to be a general purpose Nixie clock. It also serves as a good controller for the Geiger counter. It's got a parallax propeller, a high voltage supply develop, 
developing about uh, 170 volts to run the uh, the IN12 tubes, some driver logic for the tubes. Um, it's even got a real-time clock on it, which uh, we don't actually need to use, and the voltage regulators, piezo buzzer. Um, the second board over here is an add-on to run the uh, Decatron and to derive a uh, higher voltage supply for the uh, for the Geiger tube. So the uh, the Decatron and the Geiger tube both need you know about 400 volts or so. I'm running at about 430 volts, a good running uh, voltage for this tube. So we developed that with a little uh, high voltage power supply down here. It's actually this very same power supply as that one, but with a few uh, components changed and the resistor cranked up much wider to, uh, to, to get much more voltage. So let's take our uh, sample. And we can see, uh, the, the first thing to note is I have set my display refresh interval and my averaging uh, intervals uh, much narrower than the, the eBay kit. So you're seeing my display update much faster. That's, that's something that anyone can, uh, can choose according to preference, whether you want a slower averaging or a faster averaging. So you're seeing as, as I get closer to the nuclear source, the Decatron spins faster, the beeper beeps, and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Nixie tubes update to display the uh, counts per minute. So we're getting about uh, 3,500 counts per minute, 4,000. Get closer to the, uh, to, the, to the tube. And we get, get up to six, I bet we can get seven, eight, yeah, about, about what we could get with the eBay kit. So building a uh, building a Geiger counter is a fun project. It's not the most uh, practical because we don't have a whole lot of radioactive stuff around us to worry about. Um, one thing you could do is you could actually measure background radiation with with you know the the eBay kit. I think it has uh, it has a spot where you hook up a, a serial to a USB adapter and you you could measure it on your computer. Or you could do it with with the one I designed. Build a logger if you wanted to. Um, it's just kind of a fun thing to play with uh, high voltage and an interesting project. So the, the one thing I do recommend is, like I said before, stick with these cheap Russian tubes for your, uh, for your first tube. So as an example of a more complicated tube, I've got this uh, LND712 here. Um, the LND712 will actually detect uh, alpha radiation in addition to uh, beta and gamma and it includes a uh, very delicate uh, mica window on the end. So normally uh, one would not touch it. This tube happens to be destroyed so I could touch it. Um, feels kind of durable but they say don't do that so I wouldn't do that. Uh, so what actually happened to this tube, it was the first uh, Geiger counter I tried to build and I was very, very careful with it until the last moment when I was putting it in its case and I broke off a little glass tang on the back and ruined the tube. Anyway, very expensive tube, about 90 bucks, very fragile, versus a very cheap and very durable tube here that you can have almost as much fun experimenting with as you would have with this. So. Maybe when I learn to be a little less clumsy, I can graduate to another expensive tube again in the future. Um, I guess that's about it. Let me turn off the light so that both of these kits are more visible. So the camera light is off. Move the nuclear source over there. Turn off the room light. And those are uh, do-it-yourself Geiger counters. Hope you enjoyed the video.